Welcome back and welcome to this clip on the basic structure of an Excel document. Now the details will depend a bit on your operating system, on the version of Microsoft Office you're using and whether you use Microsoft Office on your own machine or in a cloud environment. Unfortunately, Microsoft is known to change the look and feel in some relevant places between versions and across platforms. So it would be very difficult to do tutorials on all the versions, but that's not really relevant because the good news is, is that the overall structure is very stable. So you should be able to locate the options with um, relative ease. Okay, so we start with an empty uh, worksheet and we will look at two things primarily that we may want to call for the time being, uh, the tools area up here and the data area down here. The tools area consists of a row of tabs and underneath each tab is a row of options and they're sort of clustered in what Microsoft calls ribbons. So for instance, the first ribbon here contains options to copy, paste and cut. Then we have font formatting options that you may be familiar with from your word processor, similar to text alignment. Uh, we'll be using a lot the insert, delete and format columns and rows options and sorting and filtering. Now, if this setup doesn't quite look the same on your machine as it does on mine, that may also have to do with the fact that if you resize the window, right, if I make this smaller, many of these options seem to be disappearing. Okay, so if you didn't see some of the options uh, that we looked at before, that may depend on the size of your window. Now these options aren't exactly disappearing, uh, but they are clustered, um, sort of grouped together under a more general um, ribbon now. So the, all the font formatting options can now be accessed by clicking on that little arrow. So you'd have them here, similarly with the alignments. And our sorting and filtering options are now clustered under editing. So depending on the size of your window, you would have to um, have a couple of clicks extra. I personally prefer to have all my favorite options clearly visible. So I usually work on a rather wide window. So that's the home tab that we will be using most of the time. There are a couple of other tabs that we will look into, most notably the insert tab, right? So if I select that, the options will change and I can insert tables. Uh, we will be using them for doing uh, summary statistics, like collecting things. And also to um, insert uh, basic data visualization tools, graphs, right, to uh, present your data in um, an easy format. The other tabs I don't really use that much, except perhaps for the data tab, which contains an option that is helpful to import some types of data from some type of sources. Um, and we also have some options to do text processing here. That's also very useful. We can use uh, that. The other tabs, feel free to explore them but I rarely ever use them. If I do use them, I primarily use them when I have a specific problem um, and a solution on the web suggests, hey, go to this tab, use that ribbon, etc., etc. So that's it for the tools area. The data area is um, down here, which consists of um, columns, right? I can select these columns if I click on them. And the columns are named alphabetically and the rows will be named numerically. So I can select uh, those as well if I want. If I want to select multiple columns, I can just click, hold, and then drag across and release. So if I wanted to select four columns, this is how I would do it, right? Click, drag, release. You can do similarly for the rows, click, drag, release. Now, the, as I said, the columns are named alphabetically. If you move across, once we move to the end of the alphabet, we'll go into the double digits until we reach some weird number, as a total of 16,000, over 16,000 uh, columns in there. 
And similarly to the rows, uh, if we wanted to go to the end of the document, we see that we can fill um, over 1 million rows. Now, if you wondered how I could move around the document so quickly, I was using shortcuts and I will point out some very, very helpful shortcuts along the way when they become relevant. Okay, so what is not relevant right now for this tutorial, but I'll do it uh, for you to have a better view is to use the zoom function down here. Uh, so if you click on that little zoom thingy and drag it across, you can actually zoom into your data area. So um, choose whichever zoom factor you feel uh, comfortable with. Okay, so now we have the data area and we've clicked on the cells. Now we re refer to these cells by their column name. So right now I'm in B1. Here I would be in A2, um, <clears throat> excuse me, C3 and so on and so forth. Now to enter data, you just click on a cell and enter some data, hit enter, and you will be automatically taken to the next cell where you could enter now the names of say participants um, of an experiment. If you want to change some data, you can click back on uh, the cell and change that if you want it. Uh, but you can also click inside the cell, right? Either by double clicking inside the cell and either adding something, age, new, right? Or you could use that up here as well. So you can click up in this line at the top and delete some information if you wanted to. So that is relatively um, straightforward. So something that you may want to bear in mind is that there's a difference between being on a cell, which is when I click on the cell and being in a cell, if I either double click here or double click here to be actually in the cell to do some changes. The final thing I want to point out for this clip is the bottom here, which says uh, sheet one. You can add more sheets within the same document by clicking the plus sign here and that would just add another table or another data sheet um, which we will be using a lot for make uh, differ, uh, differentiating between the actual data that we want to analyze and some additional information like documentation or explanation or description of variables that we're using. So keep that in mind for later. All right that's it for the first clip. Um, basic setup of an Excel document. In the next clip, we will look at how to, what types of data we can enter into the different um, rows and columns. See you then.